white in the blood of the Lamb. Now, they come out of great tribulation. And the number of them uh, is a number that can't be numbered. But how can they come out of great tribulation except the Holy Spirit be here during the great tribulation period to place them under conviction? John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 6, 44, no man can come unto me except the Father which has sent me draw him. So they've got to be drawn. It says no man can come unto me. Jesus said no man can be saved except the Holy Spirit draw him. And so they've got to be drawn by the Holy Ghost. So yeah, the Holy Ghost is going to be here through great tribulation. So that, that puts out uh, everything that Oprah Winfrey has been saying in her books and stuff about being saved in different ways. There's no way. There's only one, There's way. one way. And his Jesus name is Jesus. Like I said yesterday, I think it was Jesus didn't say I am a way. He said I am the way. The only way. <laughs> what you got, brother? Yeah. Yeah. Who that is? John Paul. How far do you want to read? That's a big book. <laughs> <laughs> Just three or four words. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, and the word of life, of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. May be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. So, you know, when we talk about sinning and everything, Jesus Christ came that we might have everlasting life. And he's the one that's been waiting for the perfect part. They yep. can't figure it out. He was perfect. That which is perfect is Christ and second coming. Well, well, a lot of them will say, you well, you know, that even the ones that admit that uh, Paul was talking about Jesus, they'll, they'll say, well, he was talking about Jesus. Well, if he was talking about when Je Jesus had already come, but he's not talking about it. He's talking about when he comes back. The second coming. The second coming. That's yep. what he's talking about. Because Jesus had already come, been crucified, buried, rose, resurrected. Everything when he met Paul on the road to, uh, to Damascus, Christ had already come once. So he, he could have been talking about, you know, him as his first coming. He, he wrote it after Christ had come, so he's talking about the second coming. There's absolutely, and uh, a lot of people may even want to know the scripture that we're talking about. It's in Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians And we'll give you the chapter and verses. But uh, a lot of the, it's chapter 13. And uh, it says in chapter 13, verse 8, Charity never faileth, but where there, there be prophecies, they shall fail. And where there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Now, Paul was writing to Corinth, and he, he was telling them, he said, you know, where, where there's prophecies, it's going to stop, it's going to fail. Where there's tongues, it's going to cease. Uh, and the reason is, it will. It says, but when that which is perfect is come, 1310, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 10, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. 
Uh, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, and I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Well, Paul is saying, right now, we prophesy in part, we speak in tongues in part, we, we do things now, because it goes on to say, for now we see through a glass, uh, uh, through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know even as also I am known. And, uh, and now by the faith, hope, and charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity, is love. One, right now the church needs prophecy for God to speak to his children. He speaks to us through the Holy Spirit, through prophecy, through tongues and interpretation. And this is our communication to the Father right now until Jesus comes. Once that which is perfect is come, once Christ comes back to this earth, we're not going to need to prophesy because Christ is going to be here with us. Uh, once Christ comes back, we're not going to need tongues interpretation because we'll have a, 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 a holy mind. We'll have a, a heavenly mind. We'll have a, a, the mind of Christ. We'll know all languages. We'll understand all languages. We'll have direct communication with the Father. But he says of these three... The greatest is charity. Charity is love. God is love. The Bible says that God is love. Heaven is love. The eternal life hereafter is with God. It's, it's eternal. And, and so love will abide forever. Love shall never cease. So prophecies will cease when Christ comes because we're not going to need them. We'll have the mind of Christ. Tongues and interpretation will cease when that which is perfect has come. When Christ comes back because we're not going to need it. But it's necessary now. God gave these gifts through the Holy Spirit. And that's in 1 Corinthians also, chapter uh, uh, 12, 13, 14. Uh, all the gifts of the Spirit, the nine gifts of the Spirit are in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And it's in the New Covenant, and it's given by the Holy Spirit. And yet we've got pastors sitting around saying that tongues and interpretation and all that's of the devil. Well, the Word of God says that God gave it. So are they saying that God is the devil? I mean, there, God says here, I give the gifts right here in New Covenant, New Testament, in the Holy Bible, chapter 12, spiritual gifts, tells us that the Holy Spirit, it says here that God uh, ordained the gifts and, and uh, Jesus Christ is the administrator of the gifts and the Holy Spirit is under the in charge of operation of the gifts. So, uh, these gifts are come, they come from God, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And yet we've got pastors right here in Moore County, North Carolina, that stand in the pulpit on Sunday and says the gifts are not for today, that any gifts that are in operation today is coming from the devil. And yet they cannot show me one verse or one chapter in the Bible that they've been done away with. But Christ, Paul says, they're going to be here until that which is perfect has come. And uh, and he hasn't come yet. Jesus hasn't come the second time we're looking for him. Revelation 4, 1, he's coming. You reckon some of those pastors and some of those people that believe that are reading what I was talking about earlier about the comments at the bottom of the page. Just read that right there, what it says, that verse 10, I think it's 10 means. Now this, I want to tell everybody here, this is not scriptural. This no, is a not. man's opinion. It is clear from these verses that tongues no longer continue today. The phrase, when that which is perfect has come, refers to the written revelation of scripture. When this revelation was completed, there was no need for the temporary gifts, tongues, prophecies, and knowledge, which were given in order to substantiate the message that the apostles were preaching. One observation needs to be made. In these three historical occurrences, uh, speaking in tongues refers to dialects or languages uh, other than the ones known by the speakers. When the word tongue is used in a singular uh, phase or phrase, it refers to the Corinthian uh, ecstatic utterance in 1 Corinthians 14.9, it refers to the physical tongue of man. And in 1 Corinthians 14.23, being in the plural, uh, with the plural pronoun, it refers to the Corinthian uh, ecstatic utterances. 
the whole thesis uh, of the Apostle Paul is that no one should be speaking in the presence of other human beings unless the hearers can understand what is being said. And that's the reason I said a while ago, you know, I was talking about this Bible, and it's a good Bible. It's a King James Version of the Bible. But that's a bunch of bunk. Because man put it there. It's, you know, it's, not, it's not biblical. And the reason I like this Bible is because it has references in the center of the page where you can, grow, you can run references on the scripture through it. And uh, so that I, I think a lot of people get a Bible like this and they'll read it and they'll see that little key up there beside of verse 10 and they'll, they'll look at it and they'll read what it says down there beside of it or verse uh, 8 through 10. And they'll say, well, that's what that means. Well, that ain't what it means. Read your Bible. That and it'll tell another, you what that's it means. another way of throwing the, the uh, Christians off. I believe that is. That's like uh, okay. I said before, there, Satan himself has got a lot of preachers in this pulpit. Well, if, if, if this man... If this, lead, you, lead you down the wrong road. Yeah. If, if this, what I just read, that this man put in that book is, is true, why don't he give us chapter and verse telling us that that has ceased, you know, telling us that these gifts are going to cease as soon as somebody writes a Bible? You know, why don't, why don't they, you know, if, if they're supposed to...